Hello, hello, hello! Magandang buhay! Katerismo! Welcome to the second law on the subject of legal aspect and tourism and hospitality. But before we proceed to all the topics that we will discuss under the labor law, we will have an overview. The Labor Code of the Philippines stands as the law governing employment practices labor relations in the Philippines. It was enacted on Labor Day of 1974 by President Ferdinand Marcos. In the exercise of his then extant legislative powers, it prescribed the rules for hiring and termination of private employees. The condition of work including the maximum work hour and overtime, employee benefits such as holiday pay, 13-man pay, and retirement pay, and the guidelines in the organization and membership in labor unions, as well in collective bargaining. And now to further discuss the labor law, let's hear Ms. Alihia discussing the learner. Thank you, Ms. Padilla. But first, let me greet you, Mabuhay. I am Jel Itzashana S. Ilio, and you can call me Jel. And now, let's talk about learners. First, what are learners? Learners are persons hired as trainee in semi-skilled and other industrial occupations, which are non-apprenticeable and which may be learned through practical training, on the job in a relatively short period of time, which shall not exceed for three months. According to Article 74, when learners may be hired, learners may be employed when no experienced workers are available. The employment of learners is necessary to prevent curtainment of employers' opportunities, and the employment does not create unfair competition in terms of labor costs or impairment of lower working standards. Furthermore, according to Article 75, which is a learnership agreement, any employer designed to employ learners shall enter into a learnership agreement with them, which agreement shall include the name and address of the learners, second, the duration of the learners' periods, which shall not exceed for three months, and third is the wages or salary rates of the learners which shall begin at not less than 75% of the applicable minimum wage. Furthermore, a commitment to employ the learners if they are so desired as regular employees upon completion of the learnership, all learners who have been allowed or suffered during the first two months shall be deemed regular employees if training is terminated by the employer before the end of stipulated period through no fault of the learners. The learnership agreement shall be subject to inspection by the Secretary of Labor and Employment or his duly authorized representative. And lastly, according to Article 76, learners in peace of work, learners employed in peace or incentive rate jobs during the training period shall be paid in full for work done. And now, let's hear the explanation of kinds of employment by Ms. Ereño. Hi, Mabuhay! I am Renee RNR Ereño, and now let's talk about the kinds of employment starting with regular employment. For the regular employment, there are two kinds of regular employees under Labor Code, Article 294. First, regular employees by nature of work, that is, those who are engaged to perform activities which are usually necessary or desirable in the usual business or trade of the employer. The second one is regular employees by years of service, that is, those who have rendered at least one year of service, whether continuous or broken, with respect to the activity in which they are employed. The primary standard to determine regular employment is the reasonable connection between the particular activity performed by the employee in relation to the usual business or trade of the employer. For the next kind of employment, let's call on Ms. Padilla. Thank you, Ms. Ereño. Mabuhay, ladies and gentlemen. I am Patricia Padilla, and now we will talk about the next kind of employment, which is the contractual employment, according to Department Order Number 18, Series of 2002, under those implementing Articles 106 to 109 of the Labor Code, as amended in Section 4. Contractual employment include one employed by a contractor or as a contractor to perform or complete a job work or service pursue one to an arrangement between the latter and the principal. Furthermore, a fixed term employee or contractual employee is a type of employee whose employment is fixed for a certain period of time. 
when the contract expires and not renewed by his or her employer, the employment of the contractual employee is deemed to have automatically terminated. Now, let's move on to the next employment. I call on Mr. Mendoza. Thank you, Ms. Padilla. Hello, my boy, everyone. I'm Andre Nicola Mendoza, and I will be discussing to you seasonal employment. An employment agreement between an employer and a seasonal employee wherein a ladder has been contracted to provide services throughout a season is known as seasonal employment contract. A season is a time frame which is a part of a year. Consequently, a season cannot be more than a year by definition. And that's the end of my discussion for seasonal employment. Now we move on to Mr. Galia for us to know the fixed term employment. Hi, Mabuhay! I am Therese Andugelio. Do you know what fixed term employment is? It is a contract in which a company or enterprise hires an employee for the specific period of time. In most cases, it is for a year but it can be renewed after the term expires depending on their requirements. And in fixed term employment, the employee is not on the payroll of the company. Under the fixed term employment, the payout or the payment is fixed in advance and is not altered till the term expires. The contract is duly signed by both the parties and is for a specified period of time. Let us now move on to Ms. Trisha Almeda for the next kind of employment. Thank you, Therese. Mabuhay! I'm Trisha Almeda. Now we'll be talking about casual employment. This is defined where an employee is engaged to perform a job insignificant to the core business of the employer. The work must be a definite period made known to both parties and the time of engagement. A casual employee is one whose work is neither regular, project, or seasonal. Once they have worked for at least a year, whether continuously or not, they transition into a regular employee with respect to the employed position. A casual employee is entitled to all rights and privileges granted by law to regular employees during the period of actual employment. Similarly, all duties and obligations must be abided by between both parties. Let's now move on to the difference between job and labor contracting. The floor is now yours, Ms. Militante. Hello, my boy everyone! I am Nina Maureen Similitante and we are going to talk about the difference between job contracting and labor-only contracting. So what is job contracting? It is an arrangement between the principal or owner and the contractor where a principal outsources a job or work to the contractor who performs this through its deployed personnel, or also called contractors, workers. It is the constructor's responsibility to perform the work and the principal has no control or direction over it. The people hired are the employees of the contractor and not by the principal. While labor-only contracting is an arrangement where the contractor or the subcontractor merely recruits, supplies, or places workers to perform a job or work for an owner or principal. The contractor only hires people. Now we are going to talk about the power of employers. We have Ms. Elijo. Let's talk about the power of employers. There are three types of power of employers. But first, let's define what an employer is. Employers includes any person acting directly or indirectly in the interest of an employer in relation to an employee and shall include the government and all its branches, subdivisions, instrumentalities, all government-owned or controlled corporations and institutions, as well as non-profit, private institution or organization. Now let's define the three classification of powers employers, to hire, to control, and to fire. First, to hire. The employer can select who will be their employees based on their classifications, qualities that your company is looking for. If you hire someone, you employ them or pay them to do a particular job for you. Next is to control. In the sense of working, especially in the payment of salary and wages. Employee management is a process that helps your workers perform at their best and achieve your business goals. And last power of the employers is to fire. Firing is dismissal of an employee from a job. With that, there are four common reasons for dismissal. 
First, failure to do the job. Perhaps the most obvious reason would be an employee's failure to do their job properly. Second, misconduct. This could be something like regularly turning up late for work or not following workplace procedures properly. It's about being lazy. Third, long-term sickness. And lastly, redundancy. This mistake can also be due to redundancy, where the employers need to reduce their work first. There are special rules relating to redundancy procedures. But remember, you cannot fire an employee without a due process of the law. The employer shall send a written notice of dismissal to the employee. This notice must state precisely what reasons are given to justify the dismissal and shall be given to the employees at least 30 days before the intended date of dismissal. Take away Ms. Militante about the causes of termination. Let's now talk about the just causes of termination wherein just causes means those instances enumerated under Article 297, Termination by Employer of the Labor Code. These are causes directly attributable to the fault or negligence of the employee. It is called just causes because the termination of employment is justified due to an employee's improper behavior or activity which can affect the company's reputation. They will be terminated for their work but there should be a valid and legal offense by observing the due process of law before terminating the employee. This is by creating the two notice rule. A notice of intent to dismiss specifying the ground for termination and giving the said employee reasonable opportunity within which to explain his or her side. Next is a hearing or conference where the employee is given opportunity to respond to the charge present evidence, or rebut the evidence presented against him or her. Last step is a noticeable of dismissal indicating that upon due consideration of all the circumstances, grounds have been established to justify termination. For further information, we have Ms. Almeida to discuss authorized causes of termination. Thank you, Nina. And now, it is all about authorized causes of termination. So, what are authorized causes of termination? It refers to installation of labor-saving devices, redundancy, retrenchment or downsizing, closure or cessation of operation and disease. In other words, authorized causes for dismissal of employee refer to those lawful grounds for termination which in general do not arise from fault or negligence of the employee. According to Article 297, Closure of Establishment and Reduction of Personnel, there are four grounds and these are the following. First is the installation of labor-saving devices. It contemplates the installation of machinery to affect economy and efficiency in the method of production. Second, redundancy. It exists where the services of an employee are in excess of what is reasonably demanded by the actual requirements of the enterprise. Third, retrenchment to prevent losses. It is an economic ground to reduce the number of employees. Reduction of personnel for the purpose of cutting down on costs of operations in terms of salaries and wages. Fourth is the closure of cessation of operation. The closure of business is a ground for the termination of the services of an employee unless the closing is for the purpose of circumventing. Pertinent provisions of labor code. Last is the disease. An employer may terminate the service of an employee who has been found to be suffering from any disease and whose continued employment is prohibited by law or is prejudicial to his health as well as health of his co-employees. Let us now move on to theories to discuss the rights of human employment. Now, I will share to you what security of tenure is. Every employee shall be assured security of tenure. No employee can be dismissed from work except for a just or authorized cause and only after due process. 
In other words, they cannot be terminated when the employee is under a fixed contract. Now, let's have Mr. Mendoza to discuss the work days and hours. Ms. Degalia, next is the rights for work days and hours. The average amount of work must be done by an employee each day cannot be more than 8 hours, not including the 1 hour lunch break. However, work that is completed in fewer than 8 hours is not prohibited by Philippine law. So we define what is night shift. It is defined as each employee must receive a night shift premium equal to at least 10% of the regular hourly compensation for each hour of work completed between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. Next, we define overtime. It's defined as work may be done for more than 8 hours a day as long as the employee is compensated for an extra time, which entails receiving at least 25% more than his or their regular pay. This will charge to 30% if it's holidays. Next, we define right to weekly rest day. Each employer is required to give each of their workers a rest day period for at least 24 hours after every six consecutive days of regular work. Lastly, we define right to holiday pay. An employee may be required to work on a holiday by the employer, but only if they are compensated at double their regular rate. And the term holiday has the following definitions in this article. First is New Year's Day, Monday Thursday, Good Friday, the 9th, 1st, 12th, and 31st of November, the 25th and 31st of December, and the day set aside by law for holding a general election. That's the end of my lesson for workdays and hours. Now we move on to Miss Militante for us to know the payment of wages. Let's now talk about the payment of wages. Wage paid to any employee shall mean remuneration or earnings which is payable by an employer under contract of employment. According to Article Number 102, no employer shall pay the wages of an employee by the means of promissory notes, vouchers, coupons, tokens, tickets, cheats, or any object other than legal tender even when expressly requested by the employee. In Article Number 103, wages shall be paid at least once every two weeks or twice a month at intervals not exceeding 16 days. We now proceed to Employment of Women together with Ms. Ereño. Employment of women in the Philippines ensure that equal opportunities are given to both men and women employees in the workplace. Under the Labor Code of the Philippines, special protection and safety of women need to be considered by employers. Article 130, Nightwork Prohibition. No woman, regardless of age, shall be employed or permitted or suffered to work with or without compensation. Article 131, Exceptions. The prohibitions prescribed by the preceding article should not apply in the following cases. Article 132, Facilities for Women. The Secretary of Labor and Employment shall establish standards that will ensure the safety and health of women employees. In appropriate cases, he shall, by regulations, require any employer to Article 133, Maternity Leave Benefits. Article 134, Family Planning Services, Incentives for Family Planning. Article 135, Discrimination Prohibited. The following are acts of discrimination. Article 136, Stipulation Against Marriage Article 137, Prohibited Acts It shall be unlawful for any employer Article 138, Classification of Certain Women Workers That is all for the employment of women. For the employment of children, let's proceed to Mr. Mendoza. Thank you, Mr. Renya. Now we briefly discuss the employment of children. In Article 139, Minimum Employable Age, it is called no child below 15 years of age shall be employed except when they work directly under the sole responsibility of their parents or guardian and their employment does not in any way interfere with their schooling. Second is that any person between 15 and 18 years of age may be employed for such numbers of hours and such periods of days as determined by the Secretary of Labor and Employment in appropriate regulations. Third is that the foregoing provisions shall in no case allow the employment of a person below 18 years of age in an undertaking which is hazardous or deleterious in nature as determined by the Secretary of Labor and Employment. 
Now for the Article 140 Prohibition Against Child Discrimination. No employer shall discriminate against any person in respect to their terms and conditions of employment on account of their age. That's the end of the lesson for the employment of children. Now we move on to Ms. Padilla for the safe working conditions. Next for the six rights of human employment, safe working conditions. Having a healthy work environment is about more than being safe. A healthy workplace is one where employees, in addition to feeling secure and enjoying a safe physical work environment, thus the employers must provide workers with every kind of the on-the-job protections against injury, sickness, or death through safe and healthful working conditions. Also, employees' health and social welfare benefit must be provided in the workplace. It serves as protection for essential services such as the medical treatment, rehabilitation, and hospitalization. It also includes the sickness. Sickness means any illness that is accepted as an occupational disease listed by the commission or any other illness caused by it work. It also includes the death, disability, accident, or incident. It also includes the drug free workplace and training and education for the employees furthermore the social security system or also known as the SSS and Philippine Health Insurance Corporation or PhilHealth are those insurances that are being withdrawn or deducted from the salary for the utilization in the event of an emergency that may occur now let's talk about the right to self-organization and collective bargaining the floor is your Ms. Almeda. Okay, we're now in Rights to Self-Organization and Collective Bargaining. It is the right of workers and employees to form, join, or assist unions, organizations, or associations for purposes and collective um, bargaining and negotiation and for mutual aid and protection. It is also refers to the right to engage and peaceful concerted activities or to participate in policy and decision-making process affecting their rights and benefits. Collective bargaining is a process where the parties agree to fix and administer terms and conditions of employment, which must not be below the minimum standards fixed by law, and set a mechanism for resolving their grievances. For the benefits for work-related contingencies, we will have Miss Elegio. And now, let's talk about the benefits for work-related contingency. First, it is about maternity leave. According to Republic Act Number 11,210, an act increasing the maternity leave period to 105 days for female workers, with an option to extend for another 30 days without pay and granting an additional 15 days for solo mothers and for other purposes. This is also known as 105-day expanded maternity leave law. According to Article Number 2, State Policies, Section 12 of the 1987 Constitutions provides that the state recognize the sanctity of family life and shall protect and strengthen the family as the basic autonomous social institution and that it shall equally protect the life of the mother and the life of the unborn from conception. While for Section 3, the grant of maternity leave, all covered female workers in government, public, and private sectors, including those in formal economy, regardless of civil status or legitimacy of her child, shall be granted 105 days maternity leave with full pay, an option to extend an additional 30 days without pay, but provided that in case the workers qualifies as worker or solo parent under Republic Act Number 8972 or the Solo Parents Welfare Act, the worker shall be granted an additional 15 days maternity leave with full pay. Maternity leave of 60 days with full pay shall be granted for miscarriage or emergency termination of pregnancy. 
Furthermore, if there is maternity leave, there is also paternity leave. According to Republic Act 8187, Paternity Leave Act of 1996, for the purpose of this act. Paternity leave refers to the benefits granted to a married male employee allowing him not to report for seven days, but continues to earn the compensation thereof, on the condition that his spouse has delivered a child or suffered um, miscarriage for the purpose of enabling him to effectively support his wife in her period of recovery and nursing of the newly born child. And now, let's call Ms. Areño to discuss the pace for regular days, holidays, and overtime. The three different kinds of income an employee receives on specific or basic days. The regular pay, holiday pay, and the overtime pay. The regular pay means the regular, reoccurring pattern of pay for an employee while working his regular hours of work, including allowances, general pay, and premiums, but does not include overtime. For the holiday pay, Article 94 of the Labor Code provides that every worker shall be paid his regular daily wage during regular holidays and that the employer may require an employee to work on any holiday but such employee shall be paid a compensation equivalent twice his regular rate. Lastly, the overtime pay is an additional pay provided to a covered employee who has rendered overtime work. Overtime pay is an additional pay of 25% of a covered employee's early late who work performed beyond it. Now let's discuss the Social Security System and the National Health Insurance. Ms. Togelio. Thank you, Ms. Areño. The Social Security System and National Health Insurance. First, the Republic Act No. 11199, Social Security Act of 2018. It is an act personalizing and expanding the powers and duties of the Social Security Commission to ensure the long-term viability of the SSS. Repealing for the purpose of the Republic Act No. 1161 as amended by Republic No. 8282, otherwise known as the Social Security Act of 1997. According to Section 2, Declaration of Policy, it is the policy of the state to establish, develop, promote, and perfect sound and viable tax-exempt social security system suitable to the needs of the people all throughout the Philippines which shall promote social justice through savings and ensure meaningful social security protection to members and their beneficiaries against the hazards of disability, sickness, maternity, old age, death, and other, and other contingency resulting in loss of income or financial burden. And for the National Health Insurance Republic Act No. 7875, National Health Insurance Act of 1995, it is an act instituting a national health insurance program for all Filipinos and establishing the Philippine Health Insurance Corporation for the purpose. The program aims to provide health insurance coverage and ensures access to cost, effect, and quality health care services for all Filipinos. The qualified defendants must be declared by the principal member. Their names must be listed under the principal member's member data record of the MDR. To finally end this video, here's Ms. Patricia. Bakit nga ba natin kailangan malaman ang labor law? Bakit nga ba? Basically, the importance of this law in regards to the world's largest industry, the tourism and hospitality, in accordance to Article 3, Bill of Rights, Section 1 of the 1987 Constitution of the Republic of the Philippines, no person shall be deprived life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor shall any person be denied the equal protection of the laws. Labor includes to the word property. Every employee must be able to own his work as a result. It is important for the employees to understand and be informed of their rights to defend themselves. For the employers to be aware of the employment circumstances. Sa mga katurismo, mahalagang malaman natin na ano nga ba ang labor law. Dahil someday, papasok na tayo sa real world kung saan magtatrabaho tayo at magiging employee. Kaya mahalagang may alam. Salamat! At paalam!